Uh, what does the proclamation do? Is it just a statement? Is it kind of a, a philosophy? Where do we well, go? Let's back up just a bit. And this is something we've been working on out of this office, or I've been working on out of my office now for about two years. This is something that's kind of dear to me. And when I got into the national positions and with the statewide positions, we've been working on finding ways to be able to get the counties uh, rallying across the country and calling for this. And we've been working with the commissioners out of the state of Utah and state representatives out of Utah, and this is a lot of it's modeled from that. And I'm kind of excited as we look at this new Congress in this next couple of years, uh, Representative Bishop, who is from Utah, will be taking over the Ag and Natural Resource or the Resource Committee for the, the House, which is going to be a very unique place because he sort of draft, started this revolution and drafted some of this uh, concepts. So what we did yesterday with the Board of Commissioners here in Jackson County we basically had decided that we wanted to go ahead and proclaim the Jackson County Oregon support for the study of, and if appropriate, the full and immediate implementation of the Transfer of Public Lands Act. Now, naturally, environmentalist groups were immediately uh, crying foul, and I understand why, because uh, what happens is that if these environmental, if these, um, if these ONC lands, let's say, are transferred, and you're not even talking about county control as much as state control well, of the yeah, ONC lands, right? You can't go county control. That's actually illegal right. because because the county, it, it, the way the laws work, it, it's the federal government and the state sovereignty. So mm -hmm. it has to go to the state based on the, the state constitution and the enabling acts of the state of Oregon. So instead of uh, the U.S. Forest Service or the BLM controlling ONC lands, or the Interior Department, what you would be looking at then would be the Oregon Department of Forestry controlling yeah. and maintaining those lands, correct? I, I would say it's more than just ONC lands. This is all federally controlled lands in the state of Oregon, excluding, oh. you know, the military bases, national parks, the wilderness areas, um, national monuments. So this is, this is Forest Service land. This is BLM land. This is ONC land. This is not just ONC. It's not limited to just, just ONC land. Oh, I did not know that. So now I understand this a little more fully. Glad you're here to talk about that, Doug. So um, one of the challenges when it's come time to uh, enforce legal forest cuts, you know, on ONC lands and other lands around here in the state of Oregon under federal control, Doug, is that environmentalist groups have been able to enjoy the Equal Access to Justice Act, which is a federal law, which has effectively paid them to sue. It's been kind of an industry in my view. Any thoughts well there? Yeah, there, there is, actually. Um, what's happening right now is a lot under the Equal Access to Justice, the environmental groups are able to sue, and if they only win on, if they can sue on 12 different points of a lawsuit and only win one of them and recover all their money and, and be able to make money in the process because they can literally, they used to be able to uh, recover, like, I forget, six, eight hundred bucks an hour, mm -hmm. and they may only be spending a 50 or $200 an hour in the process. They recent some federal legislation recently changed that so they can only get more no more than like 130 bucks or forget what the number is to be exact don't quote me on it but that modified it and that's helped a little bit but the fact of the matter is is the people of the United States are paying to have people sue to be able to stop the uh, the management of these lands because and, and the management of land by perfectly competent. Well, the local that's folks. Just, well, you know, it's, and that's the frustrating part is people blame the Forest Service and BLM and the reality of it is is when we didn't have these types of regulations in place or policies coming down from above, they were doing a very good job managing these lands and they still are capable and a lot of those same people are still in place. They're just frustrated because they have the handcuffs of the bureaucracy coming down on top of them. And so transferring the lands from uh, federal control to state stewardship does not mean that all of a sudden it goes into just a, uh, you know, rape the forest kind of thing. At least I wouldn't think it would because, the, you know, the Oregon, the state control is certainly not uh, going in that direction. And by no means will it ever limit the lawsuits. And I don't want to give that, uh, that perception out there. People well, that, well, they could still sue. sue. Well, they could still sue, but, but on the other hand, you have to sue and pay. It. You just have to use your own money. That's just exactly. It. You're not using exactly. taxpayer money to sue. Exactly. And that's, that's one of the nice things I, I really like about it is if you want to sue, that's fine. Go sue, but you're going you're gonna to spend your money and you're going to do the risk to, to be able to spend your money to be able to recover that if you're wrong. You're going to lose it. Okay. 
So this declaration yesterday, or the proclamation that you ended up having, and by the way, Commissioner Doug Bridenthal on the program, this is going to be a long process. This is not something where it's just all of a sudden you guys throw up your hand and say, yep, we're all for this, and then all of a sudden uh, Congress just jumps in and then everybody's happy, right? Well, if, if you remember, um, like I said earlier, this is, I've been working on this for two years, and you can't always just come up and say, hey, this is, this is what we're going to get done. Mm -hmm. And part of this process is getting the National Association of Counties to say, this is what we believe in. So we were able to take, go back to the National Association and say, this is what we want, this is what we need. And we did that through working with the Western Interstate Region and the, the land committees with those associations. And we all got together and said, this is what we really need to do. And we said, this is where we're going. So they made that part of their, their program, and they're lobbying for that constantly now on our behalf back in D.C., so this, that'll keep it on the front burner the same as what they've kept the payments, the timber payments on the front burner for all these years. Now this issue is now going to be on the front burner. And because that's really the, the solution here. What's interesting here is uh, Representative out of Utah is one of the authors of, of House Bill 1526 that has passed the uh, House twice. And even though it's not perfect, but it, in its uh, crafting, you know, every, there's always something that somebody gives up with some kind of piece of new legislation. But reality is, is 1526 takes all these lands and puts them into trust. And that's what's being fought here by a lot of the people that were in the Senate, the Democrats in the Senate, because they didn't want those public lands going into a trust because, in essence, it does the same exact thing as transferring them over to the state. Uh -huh. So that was the big, beautiful part about 1526. And originally, there was it created over 480 some odd trusts across the, the the western states. And what's nice about that, it basically regionalized these trusts so that we have local control over our forests. And but with part of that process, they sort of condensed the trust, so they're not quite so local, but they're larger regional areas. And but I haven't seen the map on that recently, but. I'm still looking forward to this new Congress, if this transfer doesn't happen, that we can still look at passing 1526 out of the House and the Senate and forcing the, uh, the president to veto it if that's what he chooses to do, because that'll show he can no longer use uh, Senator Reid as his uh, veto because he doesn't have control of the Senate anymore. Interesting. Commissioner Doug Bridenthal on the program here. It's uh, 749. Now, would... More local control of federal lands, does that uh, do more than just the forest lands? Does that also include national parks and such within our border? Well, the national parks would still maintain under the national park system. And that's okay. the way it's set up. We, we wouldn't want to take that program away. What about wilderness and, and federal monuments? The national monuments would maintain into the program. And okay. there's, there's no way around that right now in the transfer because the way the feds have, have written the rules on that. But that's not something that's saying, that's not saying that we're not going to continue to work on trying to unlock that puzzle. Okay, very good. But I what this does do and what the impact to local is, is on the Forest Service lands, what people don't understand is every time there's a, 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 a sale, timber sale on Forest Service lands, not BLM or ONC, but Forest Service, 25% of that sale is going back to the local schools and governments, the county. So we get 25% of those receipts, and it helps our kids with education, and it helps fund our local government. That's why they've been giving us payments. and Because those payments have not been keeping up, or I should say the timber receipts the sales, due to the, the... sales are not there. Yeah, the lawsuits. All right. Uh, let's talk with Mike. Mike, you're saying this is the worst time to transfer lands. So I'd like to get your take on that. You're with Commissioner Doug Brothall. Well, I don't know if you've addressed this already, but, yeah, with the state going the opposite way of the federal government now you know we just if we go that way then all of a sudden they'll be sued happy in this state i'm just wondering <laughs> if that's a good thing well actually if what we've done here is we've, we've taken a lot of that into consideration and i've been on a subcommittee with the state association of counties for uh, the last year where we've been trying to navigate these political waters to actually get something like this taken care of um what we're looking at here is First of all, we want the state to go ahead and fund a study. 
and let's say it might cost half a million dollars to really study this correctly. Let's say we want to study this. We want to look at what the true financial impacts are going to be, what the true legal impacts are going to be, and let's capture that. Let's let's get the hearsay off the table. Let's put the facts in front of us and make an informed decision. And if that study comes out and says this is a positive thing, which we look, everybody that lives in this in the state of Oregon, the, outside of the big urban areas of Portland or uh, or Marion County. Uh, realize that we have vast natural resources that have really done wonders for our communities. And when we look at this, we can say, we know what the study is going to come up with. We know what the outcome is going to be. So let's get the study out there and let's say, let's do this. And if the study comes out positive, let's start working on legislation to get this done. Okay, very good. 752, let's see, Gary. You're up with uh, Commissioner Brian Thone. Question? Go ahead. Yeah, it's funny you mentioned Utah because there's a story in today's Drudge Report saying that Utah plans within the next couple of week, weeks of seizing 31.2 million acres of its own land back from the feds. Wow. And that's uh, the story. If, if Utah can do it, you know, there's something wrong here. Why can't we? Well, I think there are different um, aspects of law that when the states were created, not all the states were created in the same fashion, Gary. Uh, isn't that the case, Commissioner? There, each constitution is, is different, mm -hmm. and each, each set of laws, each state, because we have a sovereignty concept for each state, is totally different. Now, something you have to consider here is that we have a completely different legislature in Oregon than, we, than they do in Utah. They have a very conservative legislature in Utah. We have a very liberal, uh, now we have a Democratic supermajority in the state of Oregon. So we have to approach this very differently. Ed, you yeah. have a question on the land transfers, too. You're with Commissioner Bridenthal. Well, it's a, a scary situation to me because, you know, through the things that I've reviewed and looked at, the Oregon Solutions Network and the Oregon Solutions controlled all of the alternatives presented for the BLM's RMP. And the Solutions Network and the Solutions Oregon Solutions Program through the university up there is, in fact, Kitzhaber's main stream of support. Yeah, and the shadow government, as we've talked about before. Shadow government. Yeah. So, so, now, so I guess, are you, are you opining or proffering the case that uh, we might be stepping from a uh, federal... Uh, well, I'd like to get Doug's opinion on that as to are we actually cutting our own throats by doing this with that particular control factor in the mix. All right. Because That's a good question. Let me ask him here. We only got about a minute left here for Commissioner well, Brian Falls. No problem. The Oregon Solutions Program is, is basically Governor Kitzhaber, and, and I don't know what the next governor is going to do if he's going to maintain that, that program. Because you have to remember the RV COG and, and programs like that we're designed to be able to be our local government program and to be able to find those regional solutions. The Governor Kitzhaber has basically uh, taken and put this, this secondary program in here to do what he wants to see done and because he doesn't think our regional programs are working as well as they should. Now, with that being said, I don't think we're cutting our throats because this is not going to be an overnight program. This is going to take time, and this is going to take years to be able to be, get something done here. But if we get a piece of legislation to start the study, I don't think it's going to hurt us at all. Finding out information on this and where we stand is not going to be a bad thing. So it would appear that uh, the next step then is waiting for Republican control of the Congress, the House and the Senate next year, and then seeing where this bill goes and then seeing if we can get that state study going, right? Well, I couldn't even say Republican control or anything like that, but what I would say is that there's a lot of Democrats that actually believe that having uh, our forests being managed properly is the right thing to do. So um, I can I can cite some of the names of those people, but I don't think it's appropriate now. But what I am trying to say is getting the study, getting the information out so that we can make an informed decision is, is the first step of anything, and that's where we have to start. All right, we'll be keeping an eye on this story big time. Thank you, Commissioner, for coming on the program this morning. Be well. And thank you. Okay. You have a nice day. You too.